All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm here at Data Innovation Summit, and I have Patrick Couch, uh, who's an AI expert with HPE. Uh, Patrick, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you. Exciting. Uh, I know we've uh, spoke so much uh, behind the scenes about various things, uh, but just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about your role at HP and what's exciting that's happening at HP. Yeah, sure. So I'm Patrick Couch. I currently work as a uh, AI expert uh, business developer for HPE. Uh, just joined HPE October 1st. Prior to that, I was with uh, Silo AI, a uh, Nordic AI consultancy startup. And prior to that, I was with IBM for 10 years, doing a lot nice. of work within AI. Did, um, did some spokesperson work for, for, for IBM. And uh, yeah, I've been, uh, been involved in AI since 2010 and uh, been loving it ever since. I love it. And uh, I was at the HP booth. I saw NVIDIA as a joint partner, and you guys are doing pretty interesting things in the space. So I would love to you know, chat a little about uh, that side of the game as well and yeah. the joint partnership that you guys have. Sure. Uh, so what do you, first of all, why do you think uh, NVIDIA's, you know, obviously CEO Jensen highlighted their Omniverse offering at their recent big GTC event. I was there, it was so good to, you know, obviously get all the insights, but this kind of stood out uh, for a lot of experts out there. Yeah, I, I, I find the, the, their Omniverse offering very exciting. I think the, the virtual world, the, the possibilities that the virtual world sets up for the physical world is amazing. And it has been so far restricted by the computational constraints, I guess. But today, I think a lot of the high performance computing, the supercomputing, the, the GPU based computing has made it possible to render environments in a much more granular way. And that right. sets up a more sort of practical use of these things. So digital twins have been around forever. Some years ago we started talking about industry 4.0 and the idea was to sort of figure out things virtually and then instantiate them physically, but it didn't really take off. But I think now we are on this cusp where I think a lot of the promise of virtual worlds are coming out. I think we're gonna, we're about to see it. And I think that was the reason why Jensen made so much of it at the GTC, right? Yeah. And I loved him. I mean, he said, uh, he, he referred to the Omniverse as the uh, the operating system of the robotics world, right? right. And he said that uh, it's a place where the robots go to the gym. And, <laughs> I, and I thought that was great because yes. what we, of course, I mean, the idea with, with using a virtual world to is to explore different workings of, of algorithms, right? And once we've sorted a bunch of that stuff out, we can then stand these up in the physical world. Right. And I think that methodology, that approach yeah. is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And I think the we're seeing the opposite of that in terms of a lot of what's being done in San Francisco right now with the self-driving cars and the taxis. There you see robotics being, being tested out in the real world. So mm -hmm. we have like, it's almost like a better program for, for autonomous vehicles and every now and then there will be a problem <laughs> with that, like right. cars hitting other cars or what have you, right? So if you can work out a lot of these kinks virtually before you deploy it in production, that's attractive. So Super. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, no, 100%, and those are great insights. Thanks for sharing that. Also, uh, since we are on this topic, I would also love to know a little about what's HP bringing on the table when it comes to digital twins, the omniverse. Would you like to share a little about that? Yeah, sure. So. Uh, Again, HP is perhaps best known for its infrastructure. Right. Like most people associate us with right. supercomputing and we certainly have the world's fastest supercomputer. We have all the exaflop systems in the world. We have most of the green supercomputers and all of the rest of it, right? So infrastructure compute, HP does very well. And so what we've done is we've basically bundled a lot of the compute power and prowess of HP with the software uh, Omniverse from NVIDIA and prepackaged this as a Offer a joint offering, so that's sort of HP is bringing the compute muscle into the equation, if you will. Yes, yes. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So, how do you see the future of you know the virtual world? Where is it going? Yeah, where is it going? It's such an interesting question. It's such an interesting thing to reflect upon. And uh, again, just based on the fact that Jensen spent a considerable part of his part of his. Uh, keynote at the GTC on the Omniverse and that area I think says a lot about what we will be seeing in the future and right. I think uh, robotics is very often sort of associated with uh, 
today, like maybe humanoid robots, and, and Jensen also, you know, announced their humanoid robotics yes, yes, thing. Yes. I don't necessarily think that humanoid robotics is the future. I think it would rather be limited to a uh, test bed for robotics generally, and out of that will come other instantiations of robotics, like, uh, you know, non-human form robots. But regardless of whether you instantiate these physically, in terms of, say, manufacturing robots in, a, in, a, in an industry plant, or if you have virtual robots or, or bots, I think the future is really a multi-agent or multi-robotic uh, world. So I think if you look at what Microsoft is doing with Autogen, or if you, if you look at the, um, the OpenAI Assistance API, what that is signaling is we're moving into an area where we are seeing interaction between multiple agents. agents. And we are seeing the increase of, of agents' agency. Not necessarily their autonomy, but at least you know what they are capable of doing. And I think if you put all of that together, I think you will want to work out as much of exploratory aspects of what this implies virtually, so you don't have to suffer through the cost or the risk of doing things physically. So to the extent that we can actually stand up a, a fairly accurate um, a copy of the real world virtually, then we can also use that virtual world as a relevant testing ground for a bunch of different things. And I think we're going to see more and more of that moving forward. Yeah, no, I think uh, these are great insights and uh, thanks for sharing all those sure. Patrick, with us. Uh, I am pretty sure our audience would also love to connect with you. So which is one of the best places they can connect with you? Is it LinkedIn or yeah. some other place? I think, I think LinkedIn is my preferred social media platform. I try to sort of I'm so social anyway that that <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to over socialize in, um, right. on the internet. But so yes, LinkedIn is a good place to find me. And uh, yeah, and again, I mean, I'm super interested about uh, in uh, everything and anything AI. Really, I, right. I, I especially am interested in like the cultural or societal impact of technology. Yes, I think I mean virtual world. Yes, but I mean just just consider the upcoming U.S. election and and the deep fake problematic and oh, yeah. and the whole thing i mean technology always pushes society to transform or collapse and i think we're, we're in the middle of that and i think omniverse style mixed reality dimensions will be part and parcel of that push of right. technology right. on us humans right. it's it's interesting times where we are in so it's good to you know obviously keep the tap of everything in uh now the audience knows where they can reach out to you. Yeah, so certainly. Is platform, but, it, is, uh, it is. It is such a pleasure uh, to have you on the Robert Show, and thanks for sharing all the great insights. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Yes.